tracked Utsunati again, and it's been about a week. He has come back to this wood pile again, where, where he spent some time last year, right after I put his transmitter in. He spent uh, about three weeks here. And so it's very, very good information to know that he has come full circle back to this wood pile, which apparently is a really good thermoregulation site. There's probably some really good rodents in here for him to eat. So I'm going to carefully lift the tarp and see if he's right under here like I suspect. I see him. There he is. He's, he's right there. You see him? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Not even a rattle. He very seldom rattles. Very seldom. So he has done some serious traveling, probably over a quarter of a mile in a week. That's fantastic. Right through Earthshine's property, um, most likely through the forest. I don't think he's going to go through the fields, but uh, yeah, he's serious traveling. Gorgeous snake. Wow. He's gone. He's missing, I don't, I'm trying to see if I can see his his. You, um, I got a snake hook in the truck. You wanna? Do you? Oh, you do. Do you have a lock top lit, a bucket of any kind? Uh, I got a, yeah, I actually got a Oh wow! I'm looking to see if that's him. I haven't seen his in, his incision. You got a copperhead? Oh, excellent. You see, he's not rattling. He's not even acting threatened. See? Yeah. Here he comes. Oh Hang on a second. I need to get a picture of that. I mean, oh, no, you see yeah, that it looks like little... surgery scars. That that is a surgery. Is that, that is the guy? Surgery. That's that it's good, it's an Anzanati. It's Anzanati. It's an A. It's an Anzanati. The scar doesn't look that good. I, I need to. His Anzanati. So you, if you've handled it more than like two times a year, this is the, this is the first time I've handled him since I released him. Oh wow. Because he is really calm, isn't he? Yeah, Welcome he's very calm. I'd <laughs> <laughs> uh, say we're due a. <laughs> Get that sucker out of here. No, never rattle. And he's a honey. Is that a pretty good sized snake? He's a young snake. He's oh, not really? that old. Uh, I think more picture. Yeah. Yeah. He just saw me close the lid. Yeah. He's not an old snake. If you look at his really? rattle, you see how the rattle is tapered? Oh, He's all right. You see how the rattle's tapered? Yeah. It um tapered. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, it's small at the tip and wider at the base. When they're born, they have a tiny rattle. As they grow, the rattle gets wider. So you can tell he's not super old because there's taper. If he was an older snake, there would be no taper. When okay, so it'd be all the same fat. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Wow. Are you saying how old do you think he is? There's really no way to tell because they add, they can add, you know, up to like six rattles a year. If really? So See, and that's the fallacy you hear exactly. is like a rattle a year or something. Yeah. And uh, so there's really no way to tell uh, other than he's probably, le I would say, less than five years old. Wow. That Then the big ones, the old ones, must be really big around. Much bigger around, and their rattles are wide all the way from the bottom to the top. Tip to the face, I guess. Yeah, we're stressing him out, all this rattling, so. Well, hey, he's, oh. he's better off where he's going, right? Where you take Oh, yeah, let's get the copperhead, too. You see one of them? Yeah. I gotta watch. I don't want to get bitten by one that could be laying in the, in the log. Yeah, here. I see one here, and you see one on top uh -huh. there, okay? He's crawling up. Now, look around here. I don't want to, like... Right. Hang on, hang on a second for you. Yeah, you gotta move all the bars. right there? Okay, we're right there. Right there. My wood pile doesn't have that many snakes. Isn't that great? <laughs> This is the world inventor of snakes over here, this wood pile. <laughs> I got one that's not that old. Yeah, when we cleared the... <laughs> All right. I was starting to rot in it. Do you want the lid open? Yeah, Carlton, will, will you, you yeah, know, get I'll one? I'll drop them in there. I'm running away, John. Yeah, there's, what, two there, isn't there? Oh, here comes wow. one. Okay. Cut the head. Oh, and they don't fight each other. Well, they might. <laughs> You might get a uh, rattlesnake might bite the copperhead. Okay, yeah. They're good. That's good. Walk him. That was the big one I wanted. Yeah, that was the first one, yeah.
and he's going down too. Dang it. Peel some of this away. Push so there's going to be one right up under one of these. Some of this wood's really nice and seasoned. You can have a great I know. Fire. Some of this is great. Some of it's older. Some of this I want, gentlemen. You care to pile down. Now, hey, look at this, guys. See, the, see all the acorns? Wow, that. they've been storing them, right? Well, no, that's where the rodents come in to, to attract the snakes. Ah. Way down. Ah, yeah, there's the, the depth there. We have to cover it back, I guess, right? And see, when it would rain, the snakes would have something to drink. Right, right. They could just sip it from the tarp. Yeah, see, this would be the time I'd get bitten because I'm about to go to the beach, right? Oh, I hear you. <laughs> Man, they went straight down. I think they dropped in that crack. John. Yes, sir. Look at that. It's a lizard looking a thing. Lizard, right? Where? See, like lizard here? Oh, that's a uh, fence lizard. If anybody wants to see a fence lizard, that's your common fence lizard. There's a what? fence lizard right here. The, the rattle and the copperheads would chow oh, on I've him. I've seen those before. Right. Well, copperhead love lizard. him, eh? You'd yeah. eat him up. Hey guys, I'm tracking Zoe, the timber rattlesnake again. And it looks like she's moved from the, the spot where she'd been. Um, resting for the last few weeks um, up there on the uh, hillside up above the um, old field. Well, I'm standing in that old field right now. If you look behind me, uh, okay, there you go. Old field back behind me. And right up in front of me, I'm getting a pretty strong signal, but it's some really thick vegetation. I'm gonna have to bust my way through and head up on the mountainside on the other side of the creek. So let's go in there and see if we can find Zoe. So in we go. Lots of briars. You see the creek down there. It's gonna be kind of tricky, I'm sure. Oh, now I wish I didn't wear my sunglasses. I can't see anything. It's dark under here. So this is the creek that's we're just downstream from the waterfall that I showed you the other day. A few hundred yards. This is what a creek should look like. If you've ever wondered, this is what a creek should look like. A mountain stream not channelize and uh, with all the vegetation stripped from the banks this is what it should look like all right carefully cross the creek without falling in dropping myself my phone and my transmitter and stuff into the water that would be bad all right The actual scientific term for this area that I'm walking through right now would be a riparian zone. Look at all these little babbling brooks channeling through. It's like a braided stream is another term for this. The way the stream runs like a braid through the countryside. The riparian zone is this whole area that is affected by the creek through floods and deposition of silt. It's a very rich habitat. All right, where is she? Seems that she's moving back up the ridge towards home. That way. So let's go find her. Look at this large boulder. She might be using this boulder for shelter. No way of knowing until I go up and see. Lots of, ooh, that's loud. Not real loud, I don't think she's here, unless she's buried. 
No. All right. Let's keep going. I'm climbing the mountainside here and it's almost vertical. Very steep. But the signal is leading me this way, so I have to follow it. Straight up the ridge. Very close. Starting to see some rock in here. Good sign. Still straight up, right along the spine of this ridge. All right, up we go. It is so thick in here. Oh man. I'm not that worried about snakes really. I'm more worried about yellow jackets and hornets. They're far more dangerous. Oh wow, what have I discovered? It looks like oh, a rock face. No way. This could be a gestation site. Oh, I hope it is. Also known as a maternity site. It's a place where female rattlesnakes go to gestate their young. And of course, rattlesnakes are live bears, so they have to raise their body temperature to keep the um, embryos inside their body at the perfect optimum temperature for growth until they reach time for birth. And they do that by going to warm sites, sitting in the sun and not eating for a couple of months in the summer. And then, then they give birth. Wow, we might get to see Zoe give birth. That would be so cool. All right, onward up this steep mountain. Here we go. Tangled in briars here. Ouch, poked in the face, okay. I want you to see what I'm seeing now. Okay, right over there. There's a huge rock. Uh, there's a boulder here. There's more rocks up there in the, in the laurels. It doesn't seem like your traditional gestation site because normally gestation sites have a little more solar exposure, but if this is all they have, it's all they have. <clears throat> Get a good pulse. All right, I'm climbing up the side of this rock here, getting a really good signal up in this gap in the rock. Look at this, it's just, it's over vertical pretty much. I'm gonna try my best. To, well, belly crawling through this is a little spooky because where there's one rattlesnake, there could be more. I'm not, I'm not gonna belly crawl. <laughs> Yep, up there. Or is it, oh wait. It's hard to tell. I think she's on the other side of this rock. I think I'll go around it. <clears throat> Lots of rock, look at this. Wow. Just heard something, I'm not sure what it was. Oh Lord, might be something living in there. A little cave. Sure looks like it. Yeah, something's dug back in there. What, I don't know. Probably a raccoon. 
I'm not gonna bother him. <clears throat> I'm gonna find the snake. That's what I came for. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh yeah, that way. Well, this rock is impressive. Look at these cracks. Wow. Okay, she's led me up above all the big rocks, and so now I'm in an area of smaller rocks. Lots of cracks and holes underneath them. So she's she's really close now. Really close. This area looks really snaky. There's lots of old trees and shrubs and bushes piled up from a clearing job that somebody did here in the years past. So there's some solar exposure up here. Good for thermoregulating reptiles. So I'm gonna have to climb through all this tangle of debris. So I believe she's on the other side. I found her after clambering through that insanely thick tangle of, of uh, dead limbs and twigs and sticks and briars. She's right here. Sitting here. Under these few little leaves right down here. So she's traveled quite a distance since uh, the last time I located her. She's traveled probably close to half a mile. <clears throat> I haven't uh, checked it on my GPS yet, but it's a good distance. So, <clears throat> this is some really good information that she's come this far in a week. And so I'm gonna leave her alone. I don't wanna disturb her too much. See that? Whoa. Snow. There's a, there's a, ooh, what's going on here? Got some movement. I think that was an ant. Yeah, there's several ants crawling around in the vegetation here. Yeah, ants bug snakes just like they do us. But of course, just like snakes, ants have a purpose. Really cool. Let's leave her alone and go find some turtles. So I'm on my way back to my truck from finding Zoe and I'm taking the trail that leads down past Kings Falls. There's a, there's a rock shelter up here that I found a, an old fire scar in several years ago that uh, has evidence of occupation back, you know, at least a hundred or so years. Um, I didn't do an actual archeological dig by any means, but uh, if I did, I might have found Native American artifacts. Who knows? This is what you would call a rhododendron tunnel. Such a beautiful place. Waterfall.
Okay, well, it looks like Zoe is up on the ridge there. Uh, it is a hot day. Hot. It's been around 100 degrees today. And, uh, boy, that creek feels good. Well, let's go find her. She's somewhere up there. Oh, boy. I'm getting close. I went up a very steep incline through a laurel thicket. And now I'm uh, on a on the spine of a ridge, uh, maybe a few hundred yards below where Zoe was the other day. And it is so hot and dry up here. Well, if we had one one bolt of lightning would set this this forest ablaze. She's not far. Good loud loud pulse. Okay, let's find her. Okay, well I found Zoe. She is down underneath this jumble of old logs and sticks and twigs and branches down here in, uh, in about the same place that she was about a week and a half ago. She's moved only about 120 feet to the south and I would say the reason she's not visible is because it's just been so insanely hot for the last few days. Today it was around 97 um, and right now it's about 85 and it's about 745 at night. So, yeah, uh, if I was a reptile, I would be hunkered down in a cool spot waiting for the night when I could then go out on the hunt. So Zoe is here on this ridge, still remaining above the waterfall. I'm not quite sure what she's doing here, but uh, just looking at this habitat, lots of downed trees and slash from a clearing project that was done here a few years ago. <laughs> that was funny. Lots of downed trees and slash from a clearing project that was done here oh, a few years back. And uh, lots of clear spots that allow quite a bit of sunlight in uh, to hit the forest floor to create good basking spots. And uh, of course with all this debris it's great habitat for rodents as well. So there is um, lots of good cover, lots of good food, and uh, water not too far away just down the hill at the creek. So that's where Zoe's located, and she's no danger to anybody in the immediate area. She's in the middle of nowhere. Um, however, uh, if you are walking the trails down here near the waterfall, then just keep your eyes open because it's the time of the year that uh, rattlesnakes are moving about in the forest. Um, just use, you know, common sense and caution. And then, as far as Utsunati, we need to get him to the veterinarian, get him x-rayed, and uh, find out if his antenna has indeed pulled down lower in his body, which has me worried. Um, if it has, we're gonna have to do another surgery on him and uh, repair that. Uh, it's a minor surgery, but it uh, still has to be done because his signal has been dropping off in the last few weeks. Um, that's one reason we have him in, uh, in captivity for now um, until we can get him checked out. So let's go check him out and find out what's going on. See a suture on, right there on his, his right side, about a third of the way up yep. from his incision. So that's where his transmitter is located. Now you're thinking that the antenna stretches from the transmitter about the area of the suture uh -huh. up to about where the hook is. Okay. And if the antenna comes loose from inside where it's sutured, it can pull back through his body. So it may not be attached to the transmitter, is what you're saying. Either it's not attached, but more likely I'm thinking it's wrapped around the transmitter. Okay. It can actually spiral around the transmitter okay. just by the action of him crawling and then cause the signal, the, you know, signal strength to go way down. Yeah. No, don't come out. That's what I'm afraid of. Now he's in. Okay, 
got him. He's in here. Just want to directly own the... Yeah, take it out probably. You might be a little twisted up, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. As long as we can see that the antenna runs along the spine like it's supposed to. and then we'll take another one with a different technique. Until we can see how these are going to look, we'll only take a few minutes for her to run us. Nice. 